Frank Sliners, Director of Technology at the Australian Centre for Health Innovation. Welcome to Healthy Conversations. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about the Australian Centre for Health Innovation. What's its role? The role of the centre is to try and improve um, uptake of technology to better skill clinicians uh, in their day-to-day -day work and to try and prevent um, those projects that go down to the you know, millions of dollars down the track and realise that they're not quite fit for purpose. So it's a little bit like a flight simulator for clinicians then? It is very much so. That's the education component of what we do. We take clinicians into an environment such as we're in at the moment, which is our, our theatre environment. They actually forget that this is a training session and actually start making real life decisions. And at the end of the day, they turn out um, having had the experience. Next time they're presented with those issues, they can make those decisions in the, in the correct manner far quicker. So how was that sort of training done in the past? Was it just on the job training? Primarily on the job, but now because education has moved a lot into universities, there's a, a bit of a gap between you know, the university education and the actual hands-on. So this is like a halfway house where we can actually prepare them far better for uh, going into to deal with real patients. Tell us a little bit about how simulation is used for technology testing. Well, it's great that we have this $13 million mock hospital environment and what we actually do is use that simulated health environment, whether it be the theatre, the ward environment, um, we have you know, clini other clinical areas, we have a home office environment and a GP office or consulting room. Those environments mean that we can actually test and trial technology with the end user in mind. So they get the experience of the technology, they give us feedback and we can actually feed that back to the companies who are providing these types of technology. Now we're vendor agnostic, we work with all companies, but what we try and do is um, find best of breed solutions that health can actually experience and give that feedback so that when these technologies are actually deployed, purchased and deployed, they actually uh, meet the needs of the users and they're fit for purpose. So running people through a simulated uh, experience of the uh, future state solution is actually a way that um, you know, we, we meet a lot of needs and prevent risk further down the track. I noticed when you were showing us around just before that you do have some computer simulations. Is that the sort of thing that you could provide to clinicians, um, I guess, outside of this, this environment? Absolutely, yeah. The, the um, virtual, uh, virtual world fire training, which is an experience, I guess, of putting a fire out with a fire extinguisher, uh, we're using a Wii remote, so that's a great um, example of things we can take on the road. So we can take them to the clinicians, we can take them to the health services, we can take them to conference venues and seminar venues. Uh, we can overlay our capability in other people's environments and do our work uh, wherever we're needed. So tell us a little bit about telehealth and video consults, because it's very topical at the moment. We've had the MBS items since the beginning of July um, come in for video consultations. How is the Australian Centre for Health Innovation working you know, to, I guess, um, push that technology out into the broader clinician community? So um, our role is not so much on the push, but in making sure that when the push comes that it is actually fit for purpose. In that regard, we're working with some of the vendors who are putting products out to the market. We're helping with their time to market, ensuring that the product is um, suitable. And in doing that, we actually bring in real uh, GPs and specialists that will be part of these video consultations and get them to experience the technology and provide that feedback. So that when the products come out to market, they'll actually be much more suitable and gain better uptake and be usable and be safe to use as well. Yeah, at the moment, we do like interoperability standards for video consultations. How is that evolving? There is a new capability that I'm aware of coming out. We'll be involved in some of the demonstration of that in the coming months. And the aim there is that you won't be locked into proprietary systems. You'll be able to actually interoperate. And I think the main thing there that a lot of people are missing is we really need a directory service at the top of this so we know who's available, who's willing to consult for these, you know, what are their specialties. So if I'm a GP in a rural uh, setting that I can actually uh, access very quickly this portal, find out the right resources I need, connect with them because I know they're available and they're willing to, to connect, they've, they've indicated that. So the whole thing just comes together. What's, what does the next you know, five years hold for the centre? From a training perspective, we, we want to become the educators of the educators and provide a framework of facilities and services to enable others to, to do the work that they need to do. From a technology perspective, we're doing a number of things we're, and, and our consultancy arm is growing. We're, we're involved now in hospital builds and providing consultancy services for process design, redesign within health facilities. Um, obviously, you know, using our understanding of the clinical workflow and mapping technologies to make sure that they fit. But definitely, you know, video consultation is, is a theme running through the centre as are devices, things like point of care computing, 
rapid access. Clinicians, uh, it can take three to five minutes in many cases to log on to computers so they don't do it. They use generic logins and this is again sort of general requirements. So the type of technologies that we uh, often focus on and we find that clinicians are very keen on is two second access to their desktop and that's something we've, we've got running in the centre as one of our primary uh, demonstrations. Also um, the type of devices that may be BYO, the pressure of bringing in your tablet type devices and your phones, smartphones and having them connected up. Uh, those types of technologies can be used now where the hospital doesn't necessarily have to fund all the devices, they can actually uh, accommodate users bringing in their own. And that's great because the user will care for the device, they'll charge it up, they'll bring it in, uh, they'll replace it if it's lost or broken or stolen. So um, it's just then the challenge of how do we securely allow that into the, into the facility. Are there solutions that you can wipe patient data from it? Absolutely. So there are some solutions that come with the providers. Certain vendors have enterprise class solutions that can uh, remotely wipe corporate information. Uh, also there are providers of solutions that are third party that can actually interoperate with um, existing devices and software suites and can manage those devices in the wild or, or within the organisation. So those solutions are available today. Okay, what sort of an impact do you think those sort of mobility solutions, tablets, smartphones, will have on a clinical setting? The real impact is information available anywhere, anytime to the right person with the right credentials. But we want to remove those barriers of I'm not connected or I'm not in my office or I'm not in the ward or I don't have a device. It should be a choice of device and, it, and this is where I think the future trends will be heading. Uh, choice of device, it'll probably be a device without a mouse, it'll be touch screen uh, capability um, and it'll be uh, something that can be used wherever you are on the road. Um, a specialist who's actually on their uh, time off with their son at the soccer on the weekend could actually get a call and actually VC in and see the digital images and, and assist with the diagnosis. The two top things are rapid access, which we've discussed, I guess, um, and that's often with a card-based technology. Then the other thing is uh, smart communications. It's finding people, finding things, finding them in a locality where you are, being able to communicate without having to page them and waiting for them to call back and then missing that call and paging them again. So I lived with that type of uh, technology for 21 years on call and, and um, on a, you know, specialty services. And it just really does not work. There's so many holes in it. So the biggest things we can do for health is actually reduce some of the inefficiencies. And we've done work study projects, for instance, around um, using rapid access and finding that clinicians are actually increasing the number of times they go to the terminals because they can get on so much quicker and they can continue their work because their state is maintained. Um, they, they start exactly where they left off. These things really, really help and then be able to communicate with their peers um, or find the right, get the right answers. Oh, hi, triage nurse. This is uh, the surgeon, Frank. Frank. How are you? Uh, well. Just letting you know that we have chop brain 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 patients brain from rural Victoria, so we'll be expecting three motor vehicle accident patients in this afternoon. Can you accommodate those? Yes. Great, thanks. Let me know when they arrive. Yeah, nurses can walk five to seven kilometres a day looking for people, looking for things and waste hours just trying to get answers. And, and that's not in all cases, so please you know, don't expect that every, every health facility is like this, but in some cases it, it can be quite a lot of inefficiency and waste of time. And technology can certainly help. What we need to do is test and try, try it out, give them the experience of it and make sure that it's, it's not going to add any risk in, in patients' care. Frank Swiners, Director of Technology at the Australian Centre for Health Innovation. Thank you for joining us in Healthy Conversations. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.